Welcome to a video where I showcase 5 things that you may or may not know. Some of these facts may be in plain sight to some, but for others, this may be the very first time that you hear about them. Let's get started. Starting things off in Garden Warfare 1. Did you know? Thanks to a discovery by Fireflower on Discord, AI engineers within the Ops game mode have a hidden functionality that is actually a relic of their former kit that was shown in the class reveal trailer back in August 2013. Simply put, on rare occasion, AI engineers will place down a turret in front of them in an Ops match, although they tend to disappear a few moments later. This is a relic from what the engineer's ability set was originally going to be, in then placing down turrets wherever they liked, as opposed to just prefixed locations. Why PopCap chose to change it mid development is most likely so that the zombies would have an answer to the cactus's garlic drone. Yet as to why the AI engineers still use it in this original way is not exactly clear, and potentially an oversight on the developer's half. Moving over to Garden Warfare 2, did you know? In the intro sequence for when you open the game for the first time, there is a newspaper zombie in one of the cutscenes of the game that is actually not called out when the player enters the area. We can easily tell that this newspaper zombie was purely meant for the cutscene, given how he refuses to attack the player at all and always goes back to a specific spot on the map, even destroying this newspaper, which normally sets off this old piece of shit into a frenzy. Does that absolutely nothing to phase him in the slightest. It seems like PopCap, in their infinite wisdom of game development, forgot to call him out once the cutscene was finished, or give him actual AI so that he would attack the player. Did you also know? In the Walnut Hills port for Garden Warfare 2, some of the objectives actually have the turrets from the first game back here that were supposed to have been removed. As shown here the engineer can build the turret, and its initial form is just fine. However, once he upgrades it to level 2, the turret's model glitches out, likely due to the assets for the level 2 version being completely removed, and it having nothing to load in properly. For the sake of viewers who may be sensitive to flashing lights, a still image will be shown on screen of what happens to the model when constructed. Though once he upgrades it to level 3, the model will return to normal, with the correct animations and appearance. Again, another oversight in PopCap's track record of oversights when developing this game. Sticking to Walnut Hills for another fact, did you know, the map has yet another bug where at the fourth objective, the pots that normally should show up do not at all due to a bug. These pots shown on screen right now are actually meant to show up at the fourth objective within the map, exactly like the Garden Warfare 1 version, though once again, because of PopCap's incredible coding skills, these pots never actually show up in game, leaving the plant team at a small but noticeable disadvantage against the zombies. Lastly, did you know? According to some findings by Mr. JT, in the Gnome Bomb game mode, the text that displays on screen can on occasions incorrectly display the events that are happening throughout the game. For example, in this clip shown right here, I plant the Gnome Bomb, making it display the text that the bomb has been planted and that the plant team needs to defend it. However, after a few seconds, when the zombies manage to disarm the bomb, instead of saying that the Gnome being defused like it normally would, it instead show the text that the gnome bomb needs to be defused, as if I was on the enemy team. According to Mr. JT, they believe that this bug started appearing in the tail of the taco update, where new UI prompts were added, causing them to clash and break the existing ones. Once again, yet another display of PopCap's coding skills that we've learned over the years. 